Ready, Abby? Okay. Good, in, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's city council meeting, our regular meeting for Wednesday, November 16th. The council chamber is open to the public at 100% capacity. The invocation tonight will be given by Pastor Clayton Paul, if he's here. Is Mr. Paul here? No? Okay. Then I'll give it. Uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Could you please stand? Lord, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for this day you've given us today, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings you give us each day. Lord, we pray for our town of Kingsborough, our community. We pray for all of our citizens. We pray, Lord, that you keep everybody safe and healthy, uh, especially during these holidays. We pray for those in our community that may be uh, going through trials and tribulations with depression or illness, uh, chemical dependency. We pray, Lord, that you help them and guide them, keep them uh, safe. Lord, we pray for our first responders in our community. We pray you help them with all they have to do, keep them safe. And Lord, we pray for our council, our staff. Lord, we pray that you always uh, give us wisdom and, and uh, give us wisdom, Lord, so that we can make the right decisions for the good of our community. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next we have, could we call the meeting to order tonight? Madam Clerk, could you please take roll call? Here. Uh, next, we have approve the agenda. Action by the council to approve the agenda or to make modification items that can be added to the agenda is constrained by state and law. Can you get a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Next, we have presentations. Tonight, we have two. The first one is fire department swearing in and badge pinning. We have Vincent Woodley, Darius Rodriguez, and Jeff Lloyd. Chief Perkins, please come up. Good evening, members of council and all of our extinguished, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just happened. All of our Another guests. Feeling. I'm going to leave it at that. Couldn't cough that one out to save my life. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing up tonight. We uh, we do have some swearing ins of one individual who has been a longstanding member of our department, who's moved from our old firefighter reserve program and our part time firefighter program now to the full time firefighter EMT. This is Vincent Woodley. I'm going to have each one of these individuals um, come forward. And then, but first, what I would like to do, because he's being sworn in, have him come up first. Vincent, can you please come to the front? Just in time. Have a little bit of a snafu. We had people get stuck in a, an accident on the 99. Oh, so sorry. two of the members that were supposed to be here, I think your mom is coming. She just parked, she just parked right. right across the street, so she's hit here. The other person who's getting pinned got stuck in the same snafu. So we're running a little bit late with this one. So bear with us, and I do apologize. This is Vincent Woodley. He has been uh, a firefighter reserve and part-time firefighter with us since January 1st, sorry, January 15th of 2021. He was hired full-time, moved to this position on October 17th, 2022. Tonight he will be sworn in and then pinned by the city clerk. Tonight uh, pinning Vincent is his mother, Eloise Puentes, and she will be arriving very shortly. So we'll do the swearing in and then the pinning. Okay, perfect. So we can wait until the swamp gets here. Okay, yeah, do that for sure. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, 
We'll, have, we'll just have you stand and the lectern up here. We have two other individuals being recognized tonight. In a process uh, of internal promotions, we have two individuals that have risen to the occasion to be promoted from firefighter to the rank of firefighter engineer. Firefighter engineer is the person who drives the big red fire truck. They go through extensive training as well as extensive testing to rise to the occasion and ensure that first that they're adequately trained ready for the job and are capable for, for doing the job. Two of those individuals tonight, the first of which is Jeff Lloyd. Jeff, could you come up? All right, Jeff was hired as a firefighter paramedic uh, February 4th of 2019 and promoted to engineer paramedic on November 10th, 2022. We're going to have you stand in the lectern right next to Mr. Woodley. We're going to make this happen no matter what. Right. <laughs> and we're delaying one more. Uh, we'll, we'll give his presentation. And again, I promise he's coming. Never fails. We're in plan B and C already. Right. <clears throat> and if we get to plan D and E, it's like a real fire. <laughs> Never fails. Never fails. The third person who's going to be recognized tonight is Darius Rodriguez. Darius was hired uh, December 2nd of 2019, so very shortly he will be here almost four years. He was promoted to engineer paramedic on November 4th, 2022, and he will be joining the rest of the group when he, there he is, perfect. Good timing. <laughs> on, sorry. Perfect timing. <laughs> it never fails. <laughs> All right. So tonight, a couple of things I would like to say is that uh, we have a, like I said, we have an extensive hiring process, and I do want to recognize uh, Darius as being an outstanding individual in this process. He actually scored number one in this process, and has been delayed in the, in the process of being recognized as well as being pinned. So I do want to make sure that we do recognize people that excel and perform stellarly. <coughs> so tonight, if we could have Vincent Woodley come to the front to be sworn in. Okay. All right.
Jesus in here. Come on, Jesus, God's in the house. Give us water. Come on, come on, Jesus. Listen, when I, I said you can listen to me. FTR today, Jesus is willing to help. FTR, FTR today, general manager, knows his stuff. Campo Operations Manager for FCRTA, and we'd like to present to you a project that we were very successful in. Okay, there we go. A, a project that we were successful in obtaining funding for that is located in the city of Kingsburg. Um, <clears throat> FCRTA, as you can see by this map, serves all the 13 incorporated cities, Kingsburg being one of them, and also 39, approximately 39 unincorporated communities in Fresno County. So it's quite an undertaking and a task to cover all these areas. We try to really focus on the incorporated cities, <clears throat> with Kingsburg being one of them. Um, what, one of the many features that we look at, attributes for the city of Kingsburg, is that you're along the State Route 99 corridor. I know a lot of people don't see that as a positive, um, aside from the economic development and access to Kingsburg, but we look at it a little differently. Uh, you also have the State Route 99 corridor, uh, which recently received some major uh, accolades for the improvements along the Golden State corridor as well. And then we see uh, Kingsburg as a gateway into Fresno from Tulare County, Kings County, south of, of the state. And it's really the entry into Fresno County. So we tried to um, not necessarily prioritize because FCRTA has to keep a, a even balance with all the cities or try to. Uh, but <clears throat> we also recognize the importance of the State Route 99 Golden State Corridor. And um, the project that we were successful in getting funding for is a resilience hub. And it's um, a micro um, transit, uh, solar, level two charging type uh, project. This is a relatively new concept. It's new technology. Many of you have seen school districts and other businesses with solar panels in the parking lots. We wanted to take it a little a step further because uh, Measure C, new technology, looks at new projects with a different scope and, and new technology. And although solar has been around for a while, uh, what we looked at as new technology is the fact that we were combining the solar panels with level two chargers. And one of the optimum features of this is that we want to be able to put them in locations where the general public can benefit, number one. Number two, the cities that are member agencies of the Fresno County Rural Transit Agency can benefit from that. And as you can see here, <clears throat> and the parking lot is right behind the library here, just adjacent to City Hall, um, we are proposing 27 parking spaces. Um, I believe it's close to what's there now, subject to your city engineer uh, approving and uh, reviewing all these plans and your planning commission. Um, also, we're looking at um, the level two chargers. And I don't know how familiar you are with the level one, level two, and level three chargers, but just a brief overview. The level one chargers would be your home unit with a 110 outlet there at home for your Fiat or other uh, Leaf car. Uh, not necessarily a Tesla, but um, your entry level type vehicles. Level two charger is more of an intermediate type charger where you can use the uh, 110 or uh, the 220. Uh, and then the level three is the fast charger, direct charger, which is a little more, um, it's a three phase type charger and it's uh, relatively expensive to use and um, it, it absorbs quite a bit of energy. We were able to land uh, approximately $538,000 for this project 
which would cover the construction, uh, which would cover the architectural rendering, the engineering, and also all the improvements for the project. Uh, the city of Kingsburg would not be out of pocket any of the money. FCRTA is going to match it with $56,000. And the reason that we look at toward this partnership is that <clears throat> FCRTA would benefit as well. We're going to smaller vehicles. I don't know if some of you have seen some of our Chevy Bolts. Uh, they're 100% electric vehicles. And they uh, utilize the level two chargers. And we're starting to use more of these, mainly in unincorporated communities, but we're starting to use them in some of the other areas because they're more cost effective, they're zero emission, and we believe that uh, FCRTA could utilize um, a, a parking stall. Very similar to the solar units that you have there now, which we've seen, I've been here quite a bit to the city, and <clears throat> I've seen the, that space utilized quite a bit. Uh, so we would do that. And um, let me hear. This is the way a conceptual drawing of what the project would look like. Um, you have the before uh, picture there up at the top. And also we would again work with the city to make a determination of the trees, how they would be trimmed, uh, how they would be affected uh, because obviously the solar panels would need the sun, the light to absorb the energy so that we could use maximum utilization of that location. The other um, point with this too is that the city would have to make a determination if you want to charge uh, a fee for the use of these chargers or whether you want to provide it free of charge to the general public uh, for utilizing that parking. Uh, you could also incorporate a validation from the vendors if, if that's the case. There's a lot of options that could be utilized in, in this type of environment for the the solar panels along with the level two chargers. Um, and then we would also have to relocate that solar charger that's currently there. We would try to find another spot that the city would think that would be appropriate for that to be there. <clears throat> the Resilience Hub project, as I briefly have talked about it, is really a concept to bring in and an alternative type of energy, not necessarily hooked up to the grid, um, that would be incorporated with um, the solar. Uh, we would also be using solar backup <coughs> batteries for energy, uh, minimizing the use on the grid system. Uh, PG&E uh, is, is very reluctant nowadays with Rule 16 and Rule 29 um, in issuing credits to either commercial or residential uh, entities. We're very fortunate in, in many ways besides the unfortunate part of these mandates to turn into electric vehicles. But um, uh, PG&E will work with us because we're classified under a fleet ready program. So it makes it very um, accommodating to work with them. We're currently working on a maintenance facility and we're working with them to help us with offsite improvements. Uh, again, the, one of the advantages is by FCRTA being the applicant with PG&E, um, we, we have certain um, benefits that we would be able to obtain. Uh, maybe the city could obtain those as well, but um, if there are any offsite improvements, then PG&E would uh, help us with those offsite improvements, meaning the monetary improvements and or upgrades with the, with the grid system itself. Uh, whether it be transformers or whether it be other type of amenities. And <clears throat> last we heard, PG&E really doesn't want to issue credits. And if they do issue credits, it's going to be eight cents on the 30 cent kilowatt uh, that you generate. So the return on investment is not really there. Um, they really want individuals to use the power that they're generating. They don't necessarily want to credit or store it. Um, at least that's what we've been told. Uh, the other benefits of the uh, Resilience Hub project is that <clears throat> we believe that it would promote the use of electric vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons on that. The uh, state of California, as you know, is very green and coming out with certain mandates by 2035, no more um, uh, emission type vehicles. Uh, for us, it's a mandate um, and we just want to uh, provide as many en 
uh, amenities out there to promote the use of electric vehicles. Um, the challenge with the electric vehicles, though, is that there are very few um, charging locations, and the charging locations that are out there aren't necessarily readily available for the, all of the general public. Um, and we believe that this location, this parking lot, would be that prime opportunity for that. And hopefully, the city of Kingsburg could benefit uh, from those amenities that, that we're proposing uh, at this location as well. Uh, the Resilience Hub project consists with other FCRTA projects. <clears throat> I've listed a, 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 an array of projects that we're currently uh, undertaking right now and also that we have planned. Uh, the first one is the FCRTA Electric Vehicle Micro Transit Rideshare Car Share Rural Expansion Program. And what we're trying to do is expand this program so that we can offer electric vehicles to pick up uh, patrons, passengers uh, in the rural areas for non-emergency appointments, whether they be prescriptions, doctor's appointments, and we're doing it through these Chevy Bolts. <clears throat> The other project is uh, FCOG, uh, Electric Vehicle Readiness Program. This was completed a couple years ago by the Metropolitan Planning Organization, uh, which uh, your council member, Michelle Roman, has been a member of both the FCOG and also the FCRTA board uh, and has contributed immensely to uh, many projects that we have undertaken throughout the region here. And this EV readiness plan essentially assessed the uh, availability of uh, electric um, level um, one, level two, level three chargers throughout the county. Uh, you have to make an assessment to make a determination of what you're going to plan out, also what the feasibility cost effectiveness is going to be. Um, this third one is interesting. FCRTA, a transit agency, took on an electrical grid analysis of the entire county, excluding the city of Fresno and Clovis. And the reason we wanted to do that, we're not in the utility business, but because we don't want to burden or impede any of our cities or unincorporated cities by us putting vehicles out there and not having the utility in place or the power. So working with PG&E, uh, we hired a consulting firm, AECOM, and they has helped us uh, provide this study that is now being used uh, as a model statewide, nationwide, to do an assessment of the grid system for both its capacity, what the shortfalls are, and ultimately what is the mitigation that's going to be needed to upgrade the utility system by the uh, proposed projects that we do. If FCRTA puts in 40 vehicles, how is that going to impact your community, the community of Selma, Fowler, Mendota, Orange Cove? We don't want to come in and, and, and hamper that. Also, there's some zoning land use requirements that are changing. They're doing away with, with gas hookups. It's now all being uh, electric, um, as I understand it. And some cities have taken that initiative. It's been going on for a while, and you're going to see more of that. So there, the trend for electric, not only chargers and vehicles, is also with the land use, commercial, residential, as such. So we're just trying to partner and, and really just be a responsible uh, partner with, with the, the cities. The FCRTA microgrid study is one that we're currently doing right now, and we're assessing the need and the availability of properties in the rural areas so that we can go in and propose microgrid resilience hub locations where we can actually put in applications to fund these solar panel level two, level three type charging and also make them available to the community, to the local municipalities, so that they could be community gardens. You could have food truck events there. You could have um, playground areas and so forth. Uh, we're even looking at contaminated areas where we don't have to breach the ground, and they could be a brownfield, and everything be above the ground so that you're, 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 you are utilizing that space. Uh, the California Energy Commission, uh, California Air Resources Board, they're all aware of what we're doing and, and they very much um, are behind some of these new projects that we're trying to um, roll out. But we're, we have to do the, the, the analysis first to make a determination whether it's cost effective 
the environmental requirements, as you know, in California are, are, are pretty high, so we have to meet those standards as well. And uh, the last one is the FCRTA Transit Feasibility Study. And this is a project that, uh, for some of you that are not aware of it, uh, we applied about a year and a half ago, Janelle, mm -hmm. a year and a half, two years ago, for a light rail BRT, bus rapid transit, along the Golden State Corridor, beginning where? Kingsburg, and ending in the city of Fresno, in southwest Fresno, Chinatown of all places. Why Chinatown? Well, that's where the high-speed rail is going to be, and we want to make sure that there's alternative connections from the cities along the main line on State Route 99. In talking with our collaborative partner, Caltrans, they have some serious issues and concerns, as many of you do, that live here in Kingsburg. Uh, you just heard about the fire chief, uh, one of the, uh, or a couple of the new um, firefighters that were going to be pinned were stuck in traffic and accident on State Route 99. And you folks have had your, your share of accidents along the corridor as well. And we believe that doing an analysis and a study for a light rail study or a BRT, BRT along the Golden State Corridor might be of benefit to all the cities, not just FCRTA, along the corridor. <clears throat> Plus, it would also connect the east cities along Manning Avenue and some other major cities that would come in and there could be a development for rideshare, car share, uh, areas where they could come in, park the cars, and traverse into Fresno and be commuters. All these are things that w we have to look at. Uh, we can't just make a determination and say, oh, let's put in a $1 billion light rail system here. We, we need to have the analysis, the data, uh, to see that determination, as well as what impacts, positive or negative, to the cities along the corridor. What impacts, positive or negative, are going to be for the commuters along State Route 99? It's not all just the five-axle trucks for capacity on the, on, the, uh, on the State Route 99. And you folks have had your share of improvements uh, for State Route 99, but you're still at capacity during the peak hours, the level of service. We came here from Fresno, Janelle and I carpooled here, and it was bumper to bumper, break and go. I thought I was in Southern California or the Bay Area, okay? Um, so, you know, we have our share of that congestion, so we're just trying to do that. And uh, we'll be consulting with your city staff. Uh, we're going to have outreach meetings uh, uh, to make uh, this analysis worthwhile for everybody. Again, not just for FCRTA, <clears throat> but also for the cities along the corridor as well. Um, we, are, we also have some other uh, projects here, the FCRTA Maintenance Facility Inductive Charging Station. Uh, inductive charging is another one that I didn't mention for level one, level two, and level three. The inductive chargers are very similar to your cell phone where you put in over a pad. Well, you had to have the buses drive over an inductive charger pad and uh, the inverter on the bus, the driver would flip a switch and you would get the charge from the ground. It's a level three type charger. And these, this is all part of the new technology that ultimately will be uh, available. One of, the, um, one of the advantages of this is that different vendors have different chargers. Different vendors have different apparatuses and plugs. The inductive charger is universal as long as you have the inverter on the bus. You could have brand A, brand B, or brand D all different buses with different chargers on the plug-in. But with the inductive charger, all you need is the inverter on any one of those buses to flip the switch and drive on that pad and it would flip, it would charge. It goes beyond just transit. It ultimately, your city vehicles, the garbage trucks, the water trucks, fire trucks, they all may be required to, to be electric. Um, airplanes are, are, are becoming electrified as well. So this is all new technology that we have to um, take on. Uh, and again, there's pros and cons with it. The cost, the construction, all those type of things. So we're just trying to get a handle on it by these studies and involving the local cities, such as the city of Kingsburg. Um, the TIRCP Resilience Hub Project, 
uh, we just uh, were awarded $6.1 million to make an assessment in southwest Fresno. I mentioned light rail system studied dropping off in Chinatown there off of Kern and G Street across from the future high-speed rail station. And I know there's politics in that, pros and cons. We just go with what's available and the information at hand, and we have to try to make those adjustments if we're mandated to switch over. And we would be doing the same thing. The solar panels with the electric uh, chargers as well as the inductive chargers as well uh, with ultimate connections to um, the fixed route and demand response systems in, in Fresno County. The last one I'll talk about here is the FCRTA microtransit program where we are partnering with League of, City, uh, League of Women Voters and um, hiring uh, individuals through our transportation provider, NV Transportation, in communities, mainly unincorporated communities, where we can afford residents an opportunity to drive rideshare carpool programs. How many of you um, are aware that there's very little few, if any, Uber, Lyft uh, drivers out in these areas? Um, th they're not. And, and we believe that this is going to fill a gap for, the, for that need, especially for the elderly, disabled veterans uh, who don't have the means to, to get into to town. Uh, and they're very affordable. Uh, pretty much $5 a one-way trip from anywhere in Fresno County in to go see their doctor appointments, <coughs> social services, and so forth. <clears throat> so with that, um, these are just some of the projects that all tie in. Very holistic approach. We're trying to make it uh, seamless, and we're very uh, honored to be a partner with the City of Kingsburg and the fact that you're along the, the State Route 99 corridor. Uh, good, bad, and different, but a lot of challenges. And uh, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have, um, and I'll try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Questions? I have a couple. Okay, go ahead. Um, <coughs> so on that microgrid, basically, we're creating with the battery backups. What size are those batteries? Um, the batteries um, have not been um, identified as such, but we want to make them so that they can absorb the energy generated from the panels. Right now, we're, the, our preliminary analysis has been that it would take anywhere from four to six parking spaces to charge a Chevy Bolt with a range of 260 miles depending on what level that Chevy Bolt comes in. And the battery um, packs that would be, that would accom accommodate the energy that's not used in that, that distribution that day would have to uh, be measured by the use of all the parking spaces and the type of panels, because you have two type of panels. You have a 400 watt panel or a 500 watt panel. So the battery is going to be uh, based on that. I think it's a great program. Um, I, I, the only things I'm not I'm not sure about, just because I've never been part of a program like this before, is so sun shining, solar's charging the batteries. Um, that people are going to be charging their cars in the evenings and stuff at these locations also. Yes. Um, that's why I'm asking the size of the batteries because eventually if people are charging them during the day and then at night, batteries are drained. Is this hooked up to an energy provider also? It, it would be. It would like, be like the PG &E. It would be the PG&E. And then PG&E is, is another source of backup. Right. Very comparable to a battery. Yeah. And that's what I'm wondering, and maybe this is a question more for staff, but do we put that in city's name? city paying that additional power bill that's not supplemented by solar and battery for a city cost? Or is that is that connection, because you'll connect this grid to PG&E's grid, so when there is a draw, does that go to FCRTA, or does that go to the city of Kingsburg for the payment? Well, we'd, we'd have to work that out, and that's where the partnership comes in. Right. And, and, you know, um, typically a partnership is, you know, 50-50, 60-40, /50, give and take, and that's where I raise the question to you is, uh, do you want to charge for the, the use of those chargers to pay for the, the energy use? And that's a very good, uh, you know, cost-effective, feasible 
uh, fiduciary question, uh, Council Member Purcell. Um, so we would have to work those details out. Um, and again, it could be that we're generating enough juice that may not be used that would go back to the grid and then PG&E would credit it, although they're not in favor of issuing those credits. And if they do, they do it eight cents on the 30 cent mm -hmm. kilowatt that you generate. So, you, we, yeah, so, so we would have to work out those details and, you know, hopefully it's, it, it's um, cost effective for the city. Again, we partner with you folks. We've done that with the solar units, the CNG at the facility, um, the rail station, um, you know, we bus shelters, we, we try to be a good partner, and, and we don't want to impede or or be a burden to you uh, financially, okay? No and, I, no, and I think you guys are a great partner for us, and Michelle, she, Council Member Bowman, she reports back all the time about it. Yeah, and we will work those details out. Those would be uh, part of the details that, that would be worked out. My other question I have, I think, is directly for staff. Do we have anything in place city-wise for, let's say, Parking enforcement, um, if we have non-EV charging vehicles parking in EV allocated spots, do we have something in place so that we know <coughs> that EV cars can park there when they're available? I mean, not currently because we don't, we don't have any uh, solar, solar chargers, chargers currently. <laughs> yeah. So there's not, there's not uh, an existing program uh, with regards to um, you know, managing solar only in those EV EV. So the other if you can when when we come back with this project if you can kind of just get us a analysis of maybe what some other cities have done for that so that we can kind of piggyback on them and then also if we're going to go here if we've had conversations with the homeowners of Apotec if they're aware of that also yeah if I may add council member to that effect uh, we would also um, add any additional lighting security cameras and even a gate, security gates. Uh, you know, again, we want to work with you, yep. the city, so that we can make it the best possible project so that it benefits not just FCRTA, but the city of Kingsburg and the residents of Kingsburg. You may get a situation too because you're going to be on the statewide map for electric charging, just like your solar unit is. Okay, uh, the units, the the two units in uh, in in Selma or Fowler. Um, you know, people have an app; they go to it. And even though they're level two and solar chargers now, um, if they can go there for two hours and get 20 miles more to get to wherever they're going their next stop, they're going to walk down the street here and get a cup of coffee, read a book, get something to eat, and who knows? Yeah, you may get a future resident out of that as well. I don't know. I like it. I, I'm <coughs> very happy that you selected us. I don't want to lose this to another town for sure. I just want to make sure on our end we're doing all right. the right stuff to make it right. Yeah, and also to that effect, you know, the, these are demonstration projects. Um, nobody has done that. The only one that we're aware of, Janelle, correct me if I'm wrong, is there's a project in Maryland that somebody, a transit agency, is doing something similar, but it's more at their maintenance facility. We're actually taking this demonstration to the cities so that we can roll it out. And eventually, I know you have other parking lots. If this one is successful and you folks are okay with it, we would not mind pursuing additional funding to do another parking lot as well. Um, and, and the technology is going to improve. So the battery is going to, the batteries are going to get better. The chargers, the solar panels, all that is going to get better. Also to, um, to the effect of uh, fiduciary uh, uh, responsibilities, FCRTA uh, cleans your panels here once a month. Rain or shine, we have a crew that comes in at the end of the month two days, they go around to every city, and we clean those panels. Why? We're in an ag area, okay? <laughs> We're in a non-attainment <coughs> district with a lot of PM10, a lot of stuff, okay? <clears throat> I have allergies. You can hear it in my voice tonight, but um, those panels get a lot of stuff on them, and we come in, and, and somebody cleans those panels every month, once a month, ever since that unit has been in there. So we do take ownership and responsibility. We'd have to work that out. Who's going to clean those panels? And this is the type of partnership that, you know, this is a half a million dollar infrastructure cost. You know, what, how can we partner so that it benefits both parties and your residents of, of, of Kingsburg? Uh, and hopefully, um, 
that more projects become of that. Well, thank you. <clears throat> and I, you know, thank you to Council Member Roman. I know that she's lobbied for this for a long time. So it's a good project. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. I have a question. Um, how many uh, vehicles would FCRTA have charging there, you know, daily or nightly? Probably a thousand. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, you know, um, quite honestly, we don't really want to use it as a primary charging hub. If we have one vehicle a night, it may be a Chevy Bolt that we've hired a resident to do an Uber Lyft type service for you folks, the city, and us. Uh, maybe one. We don't even use the solar charger that's there now. Uh, we're not trying to create a satellite location for us. We're, we're going to try to get some other projects on some vacant land and some other places. We understand that your priority is public parking for the downtown area. We get it. Uh, it's, it's an economic base. Uh, we don't want to, you know, take up a space. If we did something, the vehicle would come in in the evening at 5 o'clock. And, and charge at that point in time. We would not do it during the day. It would it, all those stalls would be open to your residents, your visitors, your general public. They would have first priority. We would not impede on that during the day. Okay. Another question I have is: um, the city owns other parking lots here in, in the city. If we partner with you on this, would uh, would it have to be here, or could we? Potentially have an, you know have it at a different location. You know the, the 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 location we put in was for this spot. We could I could try to get the funding source to to do another location. Um, you know, and um, we we would definitely entertain that if you think that's a better fit. We would definitely. I think the city owns a parking lot behind uh, Roadhouse. It's about the same size. Just. Or if it had to be, you know, that location. It doesn't have to be. Uh, okay. We just, you know, that that was one that that appealed to us, being downtown in mm -hmm. in in the area here. Uh, we thought, well, that that would be a good start. Um, but yeah, we would definitely entertain another one. I don't think there would be uh, an objection to that. I think we could develop a, um, you know, a justification for that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Moses. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate, you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next on the agenda, we have a public comment. This is time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issue within its jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. And if we do have public comment, um, just want to remind the public, we're not allowed to comment. The, the council member is not allowed to comment on your comments, but you can direct questions to staff if you want. Do we have anybody here for a public comment tonight? Come on up. State your, uh, your name, please, and if you're a resident of Kingsburg. Hi, I'm Mary Quatrin, and I live on um, 2501 18th Stroud on the corner of 18th and Stroud. And um, I just learned a few weeks ago that they want to take our property to put a sidewalk in. It's very um, unsettling to know that they already made that decision, and it was already voted on. I didn't even know anything about it. I couldn't even, like, make any comment about it. That was really concerning tonight to find that out. Um, the other thing is that... They have already taken 10 feet off of the front of um, 18th of our property, and they've already taken seven feet off of the Stroud side of our property, and they're wanting to take another five feet for a sidewalk, only for them to be able to take another five feet in the future. And I know the gentleman, Mr. Peters, is saying, it'll make it look nice and everything, but th that's her home. That's the, that's the way it looks. He says it'll look nice. Well, no, not when you keep on taking away more and more of our land. It's going to look weird. Our home is a certain size, and it looks weird when you keep taking away. It won't look normal. It won't look right. Um, what I am proposing is that they would use the designated land, which is the bike lane, and use that for 
the sidewalk instead of using our land. They've already, it's already uh, between on um, Stroud. It already goes in by five feet. They don't need another five. So if they could just use the bike lane, which is just used for recreation, and it's not necessary. And it's still not even necessary to have a, a sidewalk. And Mr. Peters tonight was unable to tell me that it was necessary. It was just something that he said the state wanted to do. But that still did not state that it was necessary. My concern, this is my home, this is my land, and not only my land, my neighbor's land, and my other concern is that it might be anybody in Kingsburg, you could be next, where they'll come in and find a project where they want to take your land and add a sidewalk or do whatever else they want with. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here for public comment tonight? Um, my name is Ray Garza, and uh, I also live on 18th, and I'm really puzzled as to why now we're putting the sidewalk in. We don't need the sidewalk on the west side of 18th. We have one on the east side. No one uses the sidewalk or even the bike area or that extra 10 to 12 uh, feet of parking area to walk on the west side. Everybody always walks on the east side. You're probably questioning, well, they're not walking on the west side because there is no sidewalk. There's enough room there that you don't have to put the sidewalk. And as Mary stated, the residents there weren't not sent a letter or anything saying, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. We got this federal money. This is what we're going to do because, I mean, the federal government gifted it to the city of Kingsburg. Well, you have the residents on 17th, 16th, and part of 15th. They don't have sidewalks, but yet their roads are narrower than 18th Avenue. Let's give them the money. Let's give them residents the money and make a sidewalk for them. We don't need it on 18th. We honestly do not need it on 18th. It's just going to cause more problems for the city of Kingsburg. More work, and you're just really going to upset that whole chain of residents that are there already. That ha I mean, we've lived there forever in a day. I mean, there's some of us that have lived there minimum of 15 years. Some of us have lived there for more than 30, 40 years. And we've done okay with that. The city of Kingsburg's been well with it. Now we're going to add that sidewalk. We're taking five feet from where it doesn't need to be taken from. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here for public comment tonight? Yeah, come on up. Come on up. State your name, please, and if you're a resident. <laughs> we know you are, so. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> I missed the last two meetings. I didn't want you to think I went away. Yeah. You I wasn't name? feeling good for the first one. Can you state your name, please? It would be a good thing for me to stay home. I what was your name I again? a really good excuse for the second one. What was your name again, sir? My wife's birthday. <laughs> she wanted to go to Morro Bay for three nights, <laughs> starting with the mid uh, the third Wednesday of the month and come home on the 21st. I think that's a very good excuse for that one. Okay. But no, I'm still still waiting to find out what, what you've decided you can or you cannot do for that alley. But before we go any further, there's one thing I, I'm standing here, I just have to say. When you hired the last chief of police, I was very much 
control Kevin Penley. And because I thought Kevin Penley would make a very good chief. And I argued with many people, including the manager here, about it. But today, I have to admit, you couldn't have done a better job than hiring Neil. That man has just been a very, very successful chief of police here. Now, that's my endorsement, and thank you to him. So now then we can go back to where do we stand about repairing that alley. I'm just asking you. He directs the staff. The last time I was here, you said you had an idea that you wanted to do. So you met with Mr. Galvez, correct? I'm sorry? You met with Mr. Galvez, the public works director, after before or after your last time here? That's correct? Right. D did you meet with Daniel? Let's let, let's talk uh, after the meeting. We can get into it a little bit further. Does that sound okay? Sorry. Can we can we talk after the meeting? We can get into it a little bit further. Okay. Okay. I will shut up. <laughs> I'll shut up. Go home until next month. They'll I'll talk come to back you again. If it's not Just wait until after the meeting. He's going to talk to you right after the meeting. If you can stick around to the end, the city manager is going to talk to you about what they're doing. Okay. Or. Or Daniel can talk to you right now. There you go. Yeah, Daniel is talking to him right now. You got the public works director right here. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's a quick response for Okay, anybody else here for public comment tonight? Come on up. State your name and if you're a resident, please. Joshua Smith. Uh, I'm at 2605. Uh, I'm on the uh, between Cam and Klepper, so it doesn't affect me for the uh, the sidewalk scenario. But I do have a, a, a issue that I'm going through with my neighbor to the north of me. Um, I'm the oldest house. And last house of uh, before the new Lennar homes were built, and there they were built, uh, I'd say 12 to 14 inches higher than me. And then so everything on Howard, which runs east and west, comes around the corner, and the drainage, and you know, it, it just kind of surprises me with all of the uh, funding and all that everything that's been put into that. Uh, subdivision being built um, everything goes p literally past all of the new houses past me uh, and since we're low uh, I get probably about 10 to 15 feet of water from the road into my house and I have just a circle drive so it drains in and uh, I have basically you know uh, the, our storm drain is basically on clipper past me um, to the south, so um, I have no drainage, uh, nothing from the new division. I just, I'm just curious how that is. Is it a storm drain that should have been put in that new subdivision and tied into SKF? Is it, or is it just because SKF wasn't um, 
um, extending their lines to uh, accommodate a storm drain for that new subdivision because everything, I mean, we have uh, individuals that drain pools and we get all their water. And uh, you're on 18th, you said? 18th on the west side, yeah. Side yeah. And so now we're, I'm going through a dispute with uh, a neighbor, and uh, there's a 10 foot section that we inquired about when we first moved in five years ago. And they and the city said it was Lennar, and they were going to figure it out. And, and we, so we just kind of left it alone. Now we have to split half of that 10 feet with our neighbor that's new, that was built a home the last ten, uh, two years we've been in the five now we got to give up four five feet of our encroachment that our circle drive and i bought my place the you know as is the way you know the way that i want wanted it and that's how i'd like to keep it but i you know I, I there's nothing that i can do now but i wasn't given uh any opportunity to try to you know I, there was no answers but now there's an answer and, and my answer is uh, their answer or your guys' answer, the city's answer is uh, give up half and then make your neighbor happy, which, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. That, that's a um, separate issue, you know, on that. I know, understand the uh, sidewalk issue is probably going to affect me in the future because where Klepper's at and Cam, there's no sidewalks. Uh, and her sidewalk to the north of me, it ends at my circle drive and she's wanting to put parking and i understand that and uh but you know it just it's one of those things and i used to be a resident on 837 nevada and when the meters came in um you know uh, everything was trying to the city was uh sub sub that out to find all of the main lines i had to pay I think it was like $1,700 just for them to find the meter and put it in. And I came in to contest that. And I was told to my face, you know, five feet away from me, well, if you don't pay that bill, we'll just put a lien on your house. And so this situation that's going on with the sidewalks and that left a bitter, bad taste in my mouth that it, you, no matter what you do, you know, we try to go along to get along, but it's not working for a lot of us. So that's pretty much all I got. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else here for public comment tonight? Okay, no, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you for your comments. Consent calendar. Items considered routine in nature are to be placed on consent calendar. They will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Each vote in favor of the consent calendar is considered and recorded as a separate affirmative vote in favor of each action listed. Approval of the consent calendar items include recitals, readings, ordinances by titles only, and adoption of recommended actions contained in staff reports. Tonight we have 5.1, approval of city council minutes, 5.2, check register, 5.3, amend the city financial policy to allow for investment with California class, 5.4, waive the second reading and adopt ordinances number 2022-002. 5.5, approval of the closure of Church Street for the Kingsburg Extravaganza event on 12-17-2022, 1-14-2023, and 2-18-2023. 5.6, approval of proposed KPOA MOU revision for 2022 and 2024. Do we have any buddy from the public or council that wants to pull one of these items? Any of these items? Mm. No. Nope. Okay. I make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion is approved. Next, we have regular calendar. 
First, we have 6.1, grant writing, consultant discussion. Staff report by Assistant City Manager, Christina Windover. Presentation by City Manager, Alex Henderson. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Pro Tem and members of council. Uh, historically, city staff have uh, researched and completed grant writing application uh, for eligible projects in the community. And while we have been successful in getting both local and state uh, uh, grants to help improve the community, many grants are becoming more complex and time consuming to complete. Given the historical congressional funding that has been approved, including the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, as well as the Inflation Relief Act, the Finance Committee directed staff in August to begin researching grant writing professionals that could assist the city in getting uh, these once-in-a-lifetime funds. As such, staff have met with two well-known California firms, uh, Townsend Public Affairs and California Consulting, uh, both of which have information in your packet this evening. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, reviewed uh, both the firms and cost uh, proposals during their last meeting on Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. Uh, each of the firms brings experience, uh, success in grant writing, and have a local footprint. However, after review of the two proposals, the Finance Committee recommended follow-up with Townsend Public Affairs because they also offer a state and federal legislative advocacy service that could provide additional funding opportunities for Kingsburg. The original fee for service uh, that was presented to the Finance Committee was $7,500 per month. However, we were able to negotiate uh, the fee to, uh, for both grant writing and lobbying services to $6,500 a month. If approved by City Council, the contract would be effective uh, once executed and can be terminated uh, with 30 days written notice uh, should the city no longer wish to utilize uh, Townsend's services. Uh, there, uh, Andres uh, Ramirez uh, from Townsend's, uh, Townsend is uh, in uh, attendance this evening. He's happy to answer questions as well as uh, Townsend President uh, Christopher Townsend who's uh, joining us via Zoom. So that concludes uh, my report, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions and I'm sure Andres is as well. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. and. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, oh, Council Members, uh, and staff. Andres Ramirez with Townsend Public Affairs. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to see you all again. Um, and of course, our firm president, Christopher Townsend, is on Zoom as well. And like the city manager said, more than happy to answer any questions you might have about our services, our work, um, or anything related to that. Christopher? Questions from council? To add to what Christopher just said, and thank you, Christopher, um, I think one of the things that I really would like council and staff to know is that, you know, should you decide uh, to engage in business with us, uh, it is in your best interest to utilize us as much as possible. Um, us being on a monthly retainer, you know, we don't work hourly. Uh, we, there are options, but having us on a monthly retainer really enables staff and council to reach out to us at any point in time, not have to worry about you know us billing extra, um, and really go after as many things as possible um, when we're looking over things and saying, hey, you could be competitive for this, this, and this. And not only is it the grants component, like competitive grant applications, but it's actually the law being an advocacy component. And why that is really exciting is it's kind of that dual threat. There's two approaches to securing funding for municipalities uh, in the state of California, both of which we've had a ton of success with. You know, grant writing being one, and then budget earmarks being another. So that is done both through the, the uh, state legislature and then through the federal government and the federal appropriations process. Um, just some numbers off the top of my head. For our uh, municipal clients this past year, 
We secured over $200 million um, in state budget direct earmarks for our municipal clients. Uh, and in the past, the year prior to that, we secured, I think it was over $320 million for our municipal clients. Um, and these are, you know, direct funding going to them. Uh, we work very closely with senior staff and then with the kind of priority projects that council and others formulate and figure out a way to work with the legislative delegation, utilize our close relationships with budget committee chairs, leadership, the speaker's office, the pro tem, to ensure that those projects are really seen, um, evaluated, and then we do all that lobbying and advocacy to make sure they get across the finish line. Um, you know, kind of turning those things into reality. Those are those legacy projects, and that's what our firm lives for. Um, you know, our, our firm motto is champions for better communities. Uh, we really believe that, uh, and it's, it's our passion to work with cities like Kingsburg, and so we really hope we have the opportunity um, to work with you all. Council discussion, yeah. <clears throat> Um, so with this $6,500 a month, um, there's, so there's two points. So one is you're saying you can go after as many grants for us. We're not limited to how many that you apply. Because I know sometimes with grant writing, um, you, you would take a percentage of how much we're applying for is how much you're getting charged. So you don't do that. You have a flat rate. Thing. Flat rate. Okay. And so, um, and then the next piece is you would also actively be looking for grants as well. Correct. Because we don't always have to come to you to, to apply for grants. You would also, it's a back and forth relationship. Exactly. It's a, it's a relationship with lots of open communication. We would identify our point, whether that be the city manager himself, um, you know, specific department heads. And that's, that's one of the things we do like to do when we begin working with the city is have a comprehensive onboarding where we sit down with city leadership, department heads, relevant staff, and figure out and have a real deep conversation so we can get to know your community. What are your priorities? What are those projects that have been outstanding? What do you really want to get across the finish line? And then we tell you, here's what's out there. And if something's not out there, that's another place where that lobbying comes in. How can we figure out how to you know, convince the legislature and the administration to really focus in on these areas, say, hey, this is a need, there's a hole here. How can we ensure that there are projects or programs that are set up so cities like Kingsburg can go after that funding, whether that be direct or creating some sort of grant program? Um, but to your, yeah, to your question, long-winded way of saying yes, it's not a one-way street. We communicate. We make sure we're sending you opportunities on a consistent basis. at any time because if we're not getting back that up to $6,500 per month, we're not seeing the cost benefits on you know, our end as well, then there, there is that problem that is, you know, we have that budget to go to. So, okay. So if you're on the back end, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we really went through you and other companies um, in the finance committee <clears throat> before we kind of landed here today. Um, and I do want to be very transparent about, you know, this is a lot of money every month. And it would be cheaper for just grant writing services. But along with the lobbying services, we can potentially get budget earmarks. And, you know, for those that don't do grants or don't really understand government budgets, those earmarks are guaranteed monies that are non-competitive. But that only really, unfortunately, takes place through a lot of lobbying um, and a lot of getting your legislators to know. So that's why we are going with the extra service for that. I think that's really important. Um, and then for the Townsend Group that's doing this, you know, from our standpoint, it's not about just getting the most amount of money. Kingsburg is a very unique community that has very unique needs. So we're not trying to just get $200 million in grant money. We're trying to get the correct amount of money for the correct projects for our town. And I think the success for the Townsend Group and Kingsburg's partnership is really going to come down to your communication with our leadership. 
with the projects that they want and really putting all of our focus on those. So that would be my only recommendation because I really support this. I really support the group. But I really want to make sure that you guys are emphasizing, especially during your onboarding, meeting not just with the city manager, but every one of our department heads. What are things that they see as potential problems in the future that we can fund through grants? And what direction are we going? So as you guys are scanning grants, as you guys are looking at legislature and stuff like that, you can kind of know who we are just a little bit better. And I think that that's really going to be the success is once you understand our town, then you're going to really know how to champion for us in Sacramento. So. That's exactly, Councilman Reno, what we love to hear. Um, we want this to be a very, very tight partnership. Uh, and I, I think just one of the really exciting things and what we're seeing with kind of the makeup of the state legislature right now and the federal, you know, the government, federal government, Congress and Senate um, is that we have a lot of turnover. And while some may see that as, OK, that means a lot of new things, it's difficult. We see it in the opposite light. We see this as a really, really good opportunity to educate a new freshman class of legislators on who the city of Kingsburg is. What are your priorities? Why is that important to them? You know, if they're over in the Bay Area or they're down in San Diego County, why does Kingsburg matter to them? And there are ways, and we have successfully found ways, to explain that to folks outside of your immediate interest group. Um, and that's what's so exciting about having that freshman class of legislators. You know, state legislature, Senate and Assembly, we're going to have at least 30 new, you know, senators and assembly members. That's a massive opportunity to really educate and get acquainted with and form strong strategic partnerships with state legislators and their staff. So I see this as an opportune time. Absolutely hear um, you know, what you've conveyed to us and we appreciate that. And like I said, we're really looking forward to the potential partnership here. It's, it's exciting. It's gonna do a lot of the lifting off of our department heads. We're having to currently write, write their own grants. You know, we have, that's a lot of work. And I know you, this is your thing, this is what you do. So we're, uh, I'm excited about it. For clarification, um, you will also go after the local ones, or do we still own local? So, you mean like the Tri County Health? Okay, yeah. Do we still own that? I can look into that, Christopher. I I think you may be able to answer that better. Whatever you need. I'm here for it. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity for Kingsburg, you know, with Townsend's uh, experience with grant writing and, and lobbying. It's going to be a good thing Absolutely. for us. Do we have anybody in the public that wants to comment? Any public comment? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more council discussion? Nope. Okay. Uh, action deemed necessary. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement and authorize the city manager to execute the Townsend Public Affairs contract. I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank motion you again for the opportunity. We uh, look forward to working with you all and appreciate your vote of confidence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you. 6.2. Request for proposals, general plan update. Staff report by Community Development Director Holly Olin. Presentation by Community Development Director Holly Olin. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Council Members. We're here tonight to request a review and, and an acceptance of the RFP for a general plan update for the City of Kingsburg. The past uh, general plan was done in, in 1992. It was well written and there were aspects of what Kingsburg valued at that time that, that are, will still be the case. That said, there are other items that need to be updated and community input regarding future growth and current community values is important as a guide for staff and also for landowners and businesses or investors. General plan is a policy document and it's written by the community to guide the future of the city uh, considering the city capacity, values, current state of the roads, water, the need for recreation and parks, the impact on public safety and other issues. Along with the general plan, an environmental document is required or an EIR. Uh, and the advantage of this document, uh, when it is done with a general plan, it's somewhat like an umbrella insurance policy. So when it's complete, it can potentially cover other projects that come in later for review and approval by the city thereby saving the applicant and the city money and time. The RFP is seeking general plan consultants to help facilitate the community outreach, consolidate the input to craft general plan policies, and to assist in creation of the environmental document. The process is estimated to take approximately 18 months. The housing element is one of the chapters of the general plan, one of the more important ones, and this will be done concurrently with other county cities as part of the multi-jurisdictional housing element, which we are involved with and um, are undergoing. Planning staff will devote whatever time and resources necessary to facilitate the general plan update effort while maintaining day-to-day -day levels of service. This concludes my staff report, and I'm available for any kind of questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Any questions from council? So funding for this piece, so we've got, we're getting funding right, correct, but the other cities, there's a pause, right? We've, we've, we've authorized funding, and we're, we are participating currently in the housing element update, that yes. And, and that is one of the elements of, of, of a general plan update. And then the rest of the funding for this? Our part. Our part. <coughs> How much did we approve for this through ARPA? Do you remember? <clears throat> so we're estimating somewhere between two hundred fifty and four hundred thousand uh, dollars for the general plan update. And so, I mean, normally when we bring RFPs, um, which is this is just where we're at right now, right? So obviously, once we get responses, the council will have an opportunity to review those and you know, approve or not approve depending upon those prices. But um, we felt it was important. You know, normally when we bring RFPs, they're usually a consent calendar item because they're generally um, you know not controversial and I don't necessarily view this one as controversial but uh, it's a big undertaking uh, it's probably you know one of the things we talked about during the upper process about you know one of the more important things it's a multi-generational document obviously the last one was done in 1992 um, and so it's just a very large undertaking involves a lot of community input you know we talk a lot about those planning documents you know you have lots of conversations about you know what subdivisions will look like all those sorts of things that you know we deal with every day are kind of this is the the backbone for that so that's Really wanted we wanted to talk about this in regular on regular calendar and just make sure that um, you know we're having this conversation um, you know and trying to be as tra transparent about the process as possible. Definitely needs to be done. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We've been doing this for quite a while, so and then to finally have some funding for the approval price of this that we're mm -hmm. looking at is definitely needed to happen. So no, I'm excited that it's finally here. So this is yeah. good. Yeah. Bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holly's ready. Yeah. My PhD <laughs> degree in planning. I love it. <laughs> Any public comment on this item? No? Okay. Um, take action. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. 6.3, Kingsburg Elementary Charter School District Consulting Agreement After School Recreation Program. 
Staff report by Community Service Director Adam Castaneda. Presentation by Community Service Director Adam Castaneda. That is me. Well, good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and members of Council. Um, so tonight's presentation uh, is going to revolve around the city's community, uh, community services department's after school recreation program that we currently host at Washington Elementary. Um, so just to start, um, the California Department of Education um, has just published uh, funding for the expanded learning opportunities program for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, these, the purpose of these findings are for this program um, is for school districts and charter school, after school, and summer school enrichment programs um, for grades kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, local educational agencies are schools and in the Kingsburg Charter District um, that re currently receive funds for classroom-based instruction programs uh, that serve grades transitional kindergarten to sixth grade um, cannot opt out of these program funds. So these, are, these have already been um, essentially a calculated for the, the city of Kingsburg's or the, the Kingsburg School District. Um, it's the intent of legislation that these local educational agencies offer comprehensive after school and intersessional expanded learning opportunities uh, to all unduplicated uh, pupils from transitional kindergarten to sixth grade. Um, the expanded learning opportunities program will allow the Kingsburg District to offer free after school programming to, at all school sites uh, perpetually as long as they currently meet the, the grant requirements. Um, so what does that mean for our after school program? So like I said, the city hosts an after school program at Washington, which is one of the school sites for the district. Um, for the remainder of the school year, um, the Kingsbury Elementary Charter School District has asked the city uh, to enter into a consulting agreement permitting the city to operate its current program for the remainder of the school year. Um, this collaborative partnership will ensure that current program participants and staff won't be displaced in the middle of a school year. Um, and it'll also give an opportunity for the district to kind of shadow our current program um, as they make plans to, to do programs at all their school sites. Um, under the California Department of Education guidelines for the expanded learning opportunities program, uh, the remainder of the school year would be free to all program participants. Um, and there would also be free transportation home uh, for all those that are in the current program and the proposed new programs for the district. Um, because of the new no fee structure, the district anticipates that they will also be operating a second program at Washington School um, if the enrollment exceeds the current 90 spots that we have at Washington. Um, so on all of the, the proposal for tonight, is that the Kingsburg Elementary Charter School District um, is willing to engage in a contract with the city of Kingsburg to operate the current after school program at Washington. Um, in exchange, the city will provide staff management and volunteer recruitment uh, for the program and work collaboratively with the district on operational management of the actual program. Um, and the school district um, will provide compensation to the city of Kingsburg for all reasonable incurred costs um, in regards to the services provided for the after-school program. Um, and so with that, um, the Kingsburg um, Elementary Charter School District Board met Monday evening. Uh, they approved the proposal on their end. Uh, we're bringing it to council tonight to receive your approval or question, answer any questions. Um, and in the audience tonight, we do have Dr. Wes Sever, uh, current superintendent for the school district. Um, if you have any questions for him as well, that um, he'd be happy to answer. Remainder of the school year, we'll run it just like it's been run, except for it will be that all the all the the compensation, everything would be paid for by the school district. Correct. So so the staff will stay the same and everything like that, except they'll be paying their salary as well. Correct. So all all expenses incurred in relation to the program, including staff salary, um, administrative costs, um, and all of that will essentially be quarterly summed up um, and um, charged to the school district. So then they're going to see how you've been running the program then for next year. We don't know what that's going to look like then next year other than maybe at each of their sites there will be expanded programs at each of the sites. So currently the school district is offering this program and Dr. Sever, correct me if I'm right, at two different sites currently, correct? You're at Roosevelt and Reagan? Oh no, Reagan and Lincoln. 
So they are currently offering the program. It's a free after-school program at those sites currently. Um, this is at the end of this fiscal year, they're going to be branching to every one of their school sites, and I believe there's five sites, um, including Washington. But because we're already occupying Washington space, because we already have 98 participants in our program, um, the school is willing to have us continue our program, um, not only just to help our participants that are currently enrolled this way, they're not looking for places to go, um, but also with staffing and, uh, and giving them the opportunity just to kind of see how we run the program in Washington. Learning Opportunities Program goes, Wes. Um, does each school district then make take up their own curriculum, or are they going to have to follow a guideline? I know that, like with the County Office of Education, since they run the after-school programs and ACIP, that it does it's not going to go through the County Office of Education and then to your district. It's each district then will make up their own curriculum. Right, and then within the extent of going out to the grant, there's specific criteria that will be used as far as so much homework, so much uh, PE time actually, and then also we have to provide transportation in order to receive the received funds. And so we will be we will be taking over the program basically. And we didn't want it this way too. We have a great partnership with the district. And so we, for this first year, we budgeted in our budget in order to create a year program so that it would be a seamless transition <coughs> as um, we just hired actually Ms. Coop for North to be the director of ELOP, the Expanded Learning Opportunity she'll be building the program at all the school sites throughout this year and next. But they didn't, it's typical of the state, right? So the state say, okay, we're going to do this program, but you guys have to make it look how you want it to look. There isn't yeah, any they have specific criteria. It has to be a okay. nine-hour program, okay. or it has to be a nine-hour school day. And so there's a lot of different criteria that we have to report to the state. Um, this year, um, we're able to, uh, um, we're able to um, contract with the city because there, it's not audited. Okay, and so there's no problem with doing that. But then at starting July 1st, we have to, uh, um, everything will be audited and we have to meet those specific criteria, including 30 extra, some, uh, 30 extra junior testing days and summer school, which those have to be nine hour days. It's, it's, so wow. it's, quite, yeah. the, it's summer quite the task. And so, but <laughs> it's criteria for the funding and it's significant, it's significant, it's about over $2 million a year and it's on one site, and so let's let's do it. Yeah. So since it's a nine-hour day, so you're saying until six o'clock then. Right. And then so then you have to provide transportation. Yeah. So transportation, we can the buses can leave around five thirty. Okay. That's a long day for a kid. Yeah. For everybody. You know, <laughs> yeah. For everybody. So, and then the getting hiring people is a, is another challenge mm -hmm. that we got to work through. That's why I was just wondering if they were going to go through the county offices of education. Right. No, not, not for this one. Um, all, every school district receives direct funding. And uh, the county office deal with two other after school grants, which is the 21st century and ACES. And ACES, yes. All right. Thank you. I have a question, Adam. Um, you said right now in Washington it's currently 90. And right now there's a fee, right? Correct. So we charge a monthly fee of $130 uh, per student. Um, and so this would be extended to the current participants so these parents would no longer have to pay that fee. Right. But now that there's not going to be a fee, are you anticipating a lot more students? I believe so. So our, our conversations <laughs> with the district is, um, and Wes, again, correct me if I'm incorrect, every school site will have their own grades. So it will no longer be a mix of grades at one site. Um, our, our current site has all grades on one, one campus. Um, so the idea is that once, I believe it's already been uh, publicized and advertised to um, uh, parents of the district. Um, so students that are at Washington currently, if they're interested in an after school program that is free offered by the district, they will get to enroll in a program. Um, and assuming we already have our 90 spots filled, you get an additional you know, 20 to 30 students from Washington that are interested in participating. Um, then there will be an additional program, not not ran by the city, um, at Washington. So again, this is just for our ninety our ninety students in our program. Oh, so the additional one would not be run by the city. Would not be run by the city. Okay, I see. We just plug in the gap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong. What this is basically saying is the program we have right now is going to continue the same way through the end of the year. 
but it's no longer going to cost the city any money because the school district's paying for it. Correct. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any public comments? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> okay, action on this item. <laughs> I'll make a motion to go in for the treatment. Mr. Fisher? I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Adam? 6.4 crime, crime statistics report. For the month of October 2022 and general police department update. Crime suit report prepared by police department record supervisor Karina Padilla. Presentation by our chief, Neil Dadian. Hello, chief. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Palomar. Good evening to you and members of the council. <clears throat> uh, happy to report no notable crime issues in October. Uh, relatively flat, our statistics kind of remain the same. Um, I do want to give you uh, a little bit of an information update on a homicide that did occur last week. I received a briefing from Sheriff's Office homicide detectives uh, earlier this week. <coughs> They're still following leads and re-interviewing people. Uh, they don't have anything significant to report at this time. Uh, I do want to note that uh, Kingsburg Police Department provided, uh, we called out all of our detectives and some other police officers. We provided them with significant manpower that evening and some local knowledge, which uh, the sheriff's detective, detectives were very appreciative of. So, you know, happy to participate at whatever level we could on that, but also very happy that the sheriff's office was uh, available to come and, and handle this, um, you know, highly specialized investigation for us. Uh, Kingsburg Police Department participated in a multi-agency crime suppression operation last month focusing on compliance checks for probationers and parolees. We um, targeted 30 locations, made 11 arrests of firearm confiscation, narcotics confiscation, and narcotics paraphernalia. 14 law enforcement agencies participated and it covered Southeast Fresno County. We are recruiting um, and interviews continue for our open vacancies. I have four true vacancies at the moment, three people solid in the pipeline. Uh, still looking, um, as always, uh, as is everybody else. So, um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident I can make a conditional job offer next week. And I also had a police officer who left us last year Went to another local agency, decided to come back. So he's in the pipeline and in consideration. So I guess, I guess the grass wasn't greener. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm, I'm happy because he's a very productive officer. And, and um, his, his reasons for leaving were well-intentioned, and I understood them fully. But he, as he put it to me, he, he wanted to come home. So I was thankful to hear that. I'm also happy to announce the promotion of two police officers to police sergeant that uh, I made last month, and I'll introduce them to you at the first part of the year, but I do want to offer my congratulations to Sergeant Monique Gonzalez and Sergeant Joshua Carey, and look forward to um, having a ceremony in front of council in the uh, first part, maybe January, hopefully. We reached out to the Department of what? Oh, yeah. But you can come. I'll be there. <laughs> we, would, we would love it if you would. Um, we reached out to the Department of Justice uh, on our Prop 56 grant because I'm, I'm getting antsy about that, and I don't like being ignored. So they did respond back, actually, and they told us that they will make grant awards by the end of the month, but they're hoping to actually do it sometime next week before Thanksgiving. So oh, fingers crossed on that. Look forward to a positive outcome. Uh, several training events uh, occurred last month as they do every month. Uh, we had uh, folks at um, uh, the uh, post-criminal investigative core of the detective school, two-week detective school. A sergeant attended leadership training 
and we always have several online courses that our officers are required to complete uh, so all of the training plan is going well uh, as well as skills training um, which should be wrapped up by the end of the year for um, our mandatory perishable skills the building painting is complete and um, I would encourage council and members of the public who are listening in to go by and take a look it's very nice the chest of the, the staff chose a medium gray with dark blue trim um, and I think they chose well because it looks very nice very professional and again I'd, I'd like the public to come by and, and take a look at it and maybe you know mention something on social media so we know we did a good job because it I think it looks spectacular not my colors by the way I didn't pick the colors because it would have been kind of the Swedish flag and I was voted down on that pretty <laughs> significantly but you know that's not my strength either um, you could kind of equate mutiny closely with uh, the response I got for my color selection and didn't go well so I'm glad the staff had a full hand in that so um, we're uh, the painters were out this week putting the final touches on that and we are also looking at some of our signage that we want to Im um, just refurbish there's a city seal out there a representation of our patch I want to add a badge to that as well as uh, a wooden dollar horse and um, uh, I guess they're the county signs or district signs or whatever they are in Sweden the small land and all that so those wooden signs that we all have around town I want to make sure that those the counties yeah thank you I want to make sure that uh, you know we touch those up because they bake in the sun pretty pretty good <laughs> so they need a little bit of love and uh, uh, hope, hopefully hope hoping to get that done you know, in the next several weeks so we can um, really make it look nice and then I want to add some some sort of sign lighted sign because you really can't tell us the police department until you get right up on it so I want to I'm, I'm looking at that for somewhere down the road to maybe add um, a lighted sign so that people not familiar with the community know, knows where the police department is still waiting on a final remodel design and cost estimates from our architect uh, but the city engineer gave us a general timeline and construction beginning end of January and maybe the first of February in October we had a health in, uh, inspection in our holding facilities by the federal County Health Department um, the first one was prisoner care health protocols um, then this month we had another one on our facilities basically title 15 stuff um, fire life safety uh, compliance with that uh, both inspections cover our policy on the topics and proud to report that we were violation free no state regulations uh, went um, were violated or uh, you know went undone so um, very happy about that staff does a very good job at keeping that up um, we are doing a general assessment of our entire police facility uh, concentrating on our servers security systems fire life safety space use for the facility so that's going to be ongoing for the next several months uh, as the remodel is in progress uh, looking to make improvements as we go along I'm going to make a decision on a vendor for our body worn cameras by the end of the month and we will probably look to implement that and have that go live within the first two months of next year we're advancing our employee wellness program with um, right now I have one officer in training this week and she's crafting a program for the agency uh, and that's in keeping with best practices in the law enforcement community um, and actually some requirements um, by state mandates that we we do some things for the wellness of our employees so uh, keeping that foremost on our mind last I want to thank uh, Public Works and their assistance on a number of our projects uh, especially director Daniel Galvez superintendent Dolph Beasley who have given us significant assistance with the painting of our police station um, system reviews such as our fire and life safety which we're currently going over general maintenance I mean you know we got a good bill of health from the from the County Public Health Department because they keep good care of the of the facilities the, the holding facilities so we appreciate that um, I also think it's important that you hear from me how helpful they are in the field anytime that we need them 
especially with animal control, quick response to graffiti abatement, um, maintenance on our streets, just the general cleanliness of our city, the parks, other city facilities. Uh, and I, I want to publicly recognize their efforts and, and have you know how much uh, we value their partnership. That uh, concludes my report. Happy to answer your questions. I have one question. Um, the person that was shot and murdered wasn't a Kingdom resident, right? Was not a Kingdom resident? He was paroled here to Kingsburg because that's where his uh, girlfriend and, and uh, oh, paroled ch uh, his child are. He's a Selma resident, but paroled here because of her residence. Her residency, okay. Okay, well, another question I have is you said that the um, you're getting a vendor for the body cams and could possibly have those ready next year, sometime next year? Yes, early next year. Okay, so did you guys purchase those yet, the body cams? No, no, we're still, we have four vendors that submitted bids. Um, uh, we, we come through numerous, but we, we uh, kind of honed it down to four that we really wanted to look at. They've all provided us with bids and we're going to review those bids uh, this week and next week and then you know, make a decision on one of those and we'll go with it. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chief. Right, thank you. <laughs> Council reports and staff communications. 7.1 Community Service Commission. Community services met last week uh, on Wednesday, and Adam gave them a number of updates uh, with regards to our park projects, so at Athwall and Dog Park and um, just um, other grants that we have out there. So they met last week. Thank you. 7.2 Public Safety Committee. We met Monday, and we discussed um, allocation of the funds that we have. And one of them we discussed was the body cam, is why I asked. Uh, and also, we discussed possibly doing some outreach uh, for education for adults on fentanyl. So that was a couple of things we, we uh, discussed Monday. That's all I have. 7.3, Chamber of Commerce. Seven point four economic development. Last day of May. And, uh, we met um, on the seventh last week, and we chose the mini mural, six of them, and we're excited to get those up and going. Um, I've reached out to the different uh, building owners to let them know which ones that were chosen for each of their sites, and um, and we also reached out to the different artists. If they don't like them, can they reject them? Yes, they, <laughs> they can. can. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Um, no, none how. None how. Okay, that's good. Seven point six planning commission. Oh, no, I cr cr crossed that one already. My bad. Uh, Seven point five, finance committee. We met since the last one. The only thing we had was the Townsend at the meeting prior. Yeah, we met in October. Thank you. Now, 7.6 Planning Commission. Uh, they did not meet in November. Great. 7 7 South Kings GSA. They are meeting tomorrow in Townsend at 6 Island. Okay. Thank you. 7.8 Downtown Business Improvement District. They met this week and they're, they're going to meet next month. Next month. Nothing to report. Sorry, I should have looked at that. <laughs> Nothing to report on. Okay. Maybe next. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 7.9 Council of Governments. We are meeting tomorrow. We expect a meeting tomorrow. I think it's Thanksgiving the week after. Are you in person though? Mm -hmm. In person? I've been. Well, it's hybrid if you choose not to, but I've, I've been in person. Mm -hmm. 7.10 Council member reports. 
Anybody have anything to report? I do not. No, I do not either. 7-Eleven City Manager's Report. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders uh, on a few community events that are occurring before we meet again on the 7th. Uh, so the chamber is actually accepting uh, award nominations for their uh, annual their annual awards. Uh, they have their dinner uh, getting part of next year. They're, they're accepting awards until December 2nd. Um, the Santa Lucia Festival is on Saturday, December 3rd uh, in the downtown. And then next Friday is the Yield Grounds Fest, which is the lighting of the tree. Um, in downtown, so the public works group uh, put up the the tree today, and so uh, next next Friday, day after Thanksgiving, the uh, is the is the tree lighting ceremony. That's all I have. We also have Abby sent out about the reed leaf um, parade is the day after. Uh, I'm the sorry, second. day before the evening of uh, the um, December Lucia. So, do you want like a head count or? Future agenda items. I have one. I just want to be able to follow up on um, the residents that came to the meeting earlier today and then you heard them at public comment. Um, I don't know what our next steps should be, Alex, um, about the sidewalks on 18th Avenue. Um, but you had, I know you probably wanted to follow up, I know, with um, staff that was there today because I know you heard a lot after the meeting as well during the meeting. So if you want to, you know, follow up with everybody, but I think we might have to have another meeting. What do you think? Yeah, um, because, you know, we had, you know, a lot of the homeowners there at the meeting and then they also um, were there representing others. Um, just some ideas that they threw around at the meeting that if, if there's a way that we could still do it without taking anyone's property. Um, I, you know, if there's just a way that we can work with everyone. They were also concerned about the fact that there was, um, they didn't feel that there was enough notifications and other things too. So I think if we can find a way that we can, you know, still do the project, but do it in a way that it makes everybody happy. I would like to find a way that we could do that for the residents there on 18th. So I, there's a way that we can um, have another meeting or bring it up um, on put on the agenda at the next meeting that would be great that we could continue talking about it before I d are we on a time frame for that that has to be done at a certain time or anything or yeah, we put it up together with yeah okay but I was just saying for as far as the grant goes there isn't like a time frame that things have to start moving when it starts and we have it proposed that we have okay do you think as part of that general update can we get maybe a parcel map of which properties are affected and whether or not we're in agreement with those parcels yet for the land because they're still disputed. Yeah, yeah, so we can put all of it together. I mean, I think there's some, you know, some of them, I, I mean, I appreciate where they're coming from. They're indicating that we're taking their property, but it, um, some of them are not actually taking property. It's in right of way, right? So city right of way, it's technically, you know, <coughs> So some of them, um, there are there is right of way acquisition that's occurring, uh, and some of them don't have right of way acquisition, but they're frustrated because they just you know it's their it's their front yard, right? So just like if you have a sidewalk in front of your front yard, similar to that, you still maintain it, but it's technically in city right of way. So we can get a map of all those um, particular locations, and you know it's sort of similar to you know what we went through on the Madsen project, where if we have to acquire a right of way. You know, s staff is not doing that. It's a federal project. We have to use a, uh, fed you know, a negotiator essentially for that um, that goes through appraisals and um, offers those, you know, basically makes those, uh, you know, those offers on land. And so that's, I know that was part of the discussion tonight. Um, I mean, Daniel, I don't know how, do you know how many letters went out approximately? No, 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 I mean like, there's 25 homes, but like how many different letters we might have sent along the time or? As far as I know, I've just been around for the one. Okay. Yeah. 
Maybe if we can just, I mean, I don't want to get too far into the weeds with it being a future agenda item, but mm -hmm. if we can just get an update on kind of where we're at with it, have Dave here for that. Sure. To, just so we can kind of openly discuss it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. No more agenda items. I will adjourn regular Kingsborough City Council meeting for the evening. Thank you.